Hey everybody, it's Delta Shiny Zeta here, and today I will be showcasing The Bloody Mary, a Psycho Killer drinking game expansion for these Psycho Killer games. So if you haven't already known, um, I actually went ahead and covered Psycho Killer a couple weeks ago, which is actually this game right here. Basically, it's a 2-6 to six player game, which on average takes 15-25 to 25 minutes to play, and it's titled Can You Survive? It's actually a really fun game, and it looks like it was definitely inspired from Exploding Kittens. But overall, it's really, really fun, especially during this time of the year if you want to play, you know, a game like this that's in theme of Halloween. Um, but anyway, the game actually has several expansions, three to be exact, with the first one being the Bloody Mary uh, expansion, which I had already gotten alongside this game um, about a month ago or so. And I actually want to go in and talk about this one because it's really fun, especially if you are somebody who likes drinking and having, you know, drinking fun with your friends at parties and stuff like that. I'll start by saying because it's an expansion, uh, the base game is required, so don't think you can just buy this and then play the game. You do need the base game, so I recommend going to um, their store, their online store actually, their website has them. You can buy this as well as this um, and just buy both together in bulk, that way you have the base game too. But this one here, I'll just quickly show the back. I have already opened it, but I'm going to be just, you know, uh, showcasing the cards and everything in there. It has a couple new things, uh, Bloody Mary's uh, drinking cards, as well as the character cards, which I thought was the funnest thing about um, the expansion. Well, I don't know, that or the drinking, I'm not really sure. Let me go ahead and open it up, though. So upon opening the box, you'll see a couple things. Uh, the first thing is going to be the rules. It's not the rules for the entire Cycle Killer game, this is only... Uh, covering these new cards in this expansion and basically, you know, what to do and so on and so forth. But I'll be talking about this as we go because there are some uh, setup changes that we do have to make. I'm going to go ahead and place these on the side. And I will also place this box on the side because I don't need that to be here in the way. Alright, and then the rest of the cards are just right there. Okay, so the very first thing you will see is that this expansion actually has one, two, three, four, five Bloody Mary cards. Now, if you take a look at these cards, you'll actually see a really, really large resemblance to the actual Psycho Killer card from the base game, which you can see right here. And there's also five of them, just like how there's five Psycho Killers. The main reason why these are here is because these are essentially replacing the Psycho Killer. Again, the whole purpose of this expansion um, is to actually go in and make it a drinking game with some fun twists. Even if you don't drink, you could technically just change these to Bloody Marys and you'll be fine. But what you have to do uh, for setup is replace all of these Psycho Killers with Bloody Mary. So you want to go ahead and remove all five Psycho Killers from the main deck and then shuffle these in there instead. That's what you do. The second thing that you'll see is that there's a bunch of these yellow drinking cards and they do largely resemble the weapon cards from the base game. As you can see, um, it's just uh, you know a picture of something with a number in the bottom right corner. The big difference, of course, is that they're yellow and not red and that they're drinking cards, like actual types of drinks, and not weapons. But you'll see um, a couple of ones. You'll see beer, beer so there's three beer, then there's uh, three champagne, I believe, then there's uh, three cocktails, or plus twos, then there's three shots, those are plus twos, uh, three wines, those are also plus ones, and then there's a keg, which is plus five, just like how I think the chainsaw was the plus five for the weapons in the original. So. The number of uh, drinking cards is actually the exact same to the number of weapon cards in the base game. So, the other thing that you want to do if you're playing the drinking version is to remove all the weapon cards from the base game. Remove them all and shuffle all of these in the entire um, in the entire deck instead. And that's the whole setup. So, like, as a quick reminder, replace all the weapon cards with all the drinking cards and replace all the psycho killers with the Bloody Marys. And that's what you do. Essentially what you're doing is pretty much the same thing, um, except that all of the types of cards that refer to psycho killers or weapons now refer to these instead. Let me show you some examples. For the base game, here's a barricade card that you may remember. This one says, uh, play during an attack to avoid playing your weapon cards. So all you and the other players have to know is that if you play with the expansion, you're treating them the same thing. So if you have this card in your hand, uh, basically replace the word weapon cards with like drinking cards, which are these. So if uh, you know this scenario does actually uh, happen like an attack, you can actually play this to avoid playing any of your drinking cards, which would be these instead of weapon cards. And then an example with the Psycho Killer, this double tap card. If you have just drawn a Psycho Killer, put it back anywhere in the deck. Again, same thing. If you draw a Bloody Mary, all you have to do is play double tap and it treats it as a Psycho Killer. As long as you know that weapons and drinking cards 
and then Bloody Mary and Psycho Killers are interchangeable terms within each other, then you'll be fine. You and your friends will be fine when you play this game. That's all you need to know. One other thing I forgot to mention, I went ahead and separated these, but the expansion, just like the base game, does also have these uh, blank cards. Um, these, as well as the ones from the main, uh, main game, I actually went ahead and combined them all. But just know that they both do have these things, and these are just custom cards if you want to make custom rules. Or if you lose a card and need to replace it, just go ahead and use one of these. But I'm not going to be covering these because these are completely up to you and your friends. Moving back into the rest of these cards, let's go ahead and finish these up. So the next thing you'll see is a couple of different um, effects as well as a couple special cards at the end, which I'll talk about later. Those are gonna be the last ones we talk about. Let's cover these first. So the first thing is that there is one new black card introduced. This one says Splatter. This one says all players must start drinking and can only stop drinking when you stop or they finish their drink. So it's one of the unique drinking cards for sure, you know, and it's a black card, uh, you know, um, which means that you have to immediately play it uh, when you draw it, unless your score currently is 10 or higher. Um, but yeah, that's a pretty fun twist, right? To add a little bit of drinking. It's actually similar to one of those cards in the King's Cup. I forgot which one that is. It might be Ace. It's been a while since I played King's Cup. I think it's that one. Um, then there's two of this card, which is called uh, Pass Out Under the Bed. This one says, take a drink to end your turn without drawing from the deck. And as you can see, it's a fast forward card, which makes sense by reading its effect. So yeah, if you just want to end your turn, just take a drink. That's it. And there's two more here. There is a Book of the Brain Dead. This one says, finish your drink to pick up a card from the discard pile. That's actually a really good card, as long as you are okay finishing your drink. But you get to pick any card from the discard pile. That's pretty amazing. And then there's, call the cops. Call the cops says, request a specific card from a player. But if they don't have it, you must take a drink. Kind of like a little bit of a gamble card, for sure. Since you're going to be, uh, you know, requesting cards that have effects, not actually weapons or drinks, you know. Um, so that's going to be interesting, but there's two of these in there. And that's it for these types of effects. So the fourth and final are these new ones. And I'll actually put these on the side because uh, they're effect cards, but they uh, affect the characters. I'll talk about that in a bit. But there's actually six of these character cards. So the character cards, the way that they work is that they're also just mixed in there um, with the rest of the, uh, of the deck. I'll just go ahead and quickly show these like that. I guess I'll talk about them in a little bit. But the way they work is that they're mixed in there with the deck, you know, face down, shuffle them, you know, put in there. Which means that they can actually be in players' hands at different points in the game. Uh, when you do have a character card in your hand, you immediately have to name it and tell everybody that you have this in your hand and what it does. Because character cards basically have special effects that pertain to you as long as you hold a card. But these cards are not immune to protection. It's not like you can put it on the side and be like, I'm this role for the rest of the game. No. They're still in your hand, which means they can still be discarded, they can still be stolen, they can still be sent back to the deck or whatever else that happens. Um, but as long as you have it, players need to know this, and when you don't have it, players need to know this as well. Um, for example, the bartender says, whenever a player needs a new drink, you must get it for them. <clears throat> so as you can see, it's a roll. If somebody runs out, you gotta go get them. You gotta, you gotta go get the drink for them. Next one is Vampire. Vampire says, hide your fangs. Whenever a player sees your teeth, you must take a drink. And these are consistent, like, passive effects. Uh, the final girl. This one says, you do not have to drink while you are holding this card. Uh, this is for those people that don't want to drink at all but are playing the game. I see. The ghost. If any player looks at you, they must take a drink. This one's good because you can make other people drink. And there's the jock. Pick a player to join your frat. They must drink every time you drink. It's like you're bonded, you know, two people. And then the reporter. Anytime you ask a player a question and they do not answer with no comment, they must take a drink. Okay? And then there's the priest. Each time you make the sign of the cross, the last player to copy you must take a drink. And that's basically it for how these work. So again, these are just going to be randomly throughout the game, but they're not immune, you know, to card effects. The last two cards are just two copies of the same one, which is Play Dead. This one says, save any one character card from being discarded during an attack. Because one thing I haven't mentioned, is that when there's actually a Psycho Killer or Bloody Mary attack, meaning it's played, aside from all the drinking and or weapon cards being played in front of you, uh, character cards are also discarded immediately into the discard pile on face up. The one exception is if you have the play dead card, because this actually does protect them. And that's basically it for the rules, but just to talk a little bit about the whole drinking thing, aside from the few cards that I mentioned here that do have some kind of drinking effect, as well as the character cards, uh, the big twist of drinking 
is that any time a card is played, whether it's a, a drinking card or a Bloody Mary card, um, basically that score, those points, that's actually how many drinks that person is going to take. So for example, if somebody plays a Bloody Mary in front of them because they drew it from the top, that's three. They automatically have to take three drinks from their drink, which, you know, whatever it could be. It's beer, wine, Trulies, whatever you're into, you know, White Claws maybe. You take three of those, three of those uh, drinks. Um, and if you actually have drinking cards in here, then what you do is any weapon cards you put, let's say I had two beers, you know, because if somebody put a Bloody Mary, I got to play this in front of me. I take two because that's one and one. So I take two drinks uh, worth of my drink. So there's some really bad ones like this keg that's five. If you have a five plus a couple others, that's going to be about seven to eight drinks there. So be very careful. But that's basically how that works. There's actually a couple other optional rules regarding drinking. And for this, I'm just going to go ahead and show it and talk about it at the same time. But this one right here says, put a jug in the middle of the table. Each time someone plays a Bloody Mary, they add some of their drink into the jug. Whoever plays the fifth Bloody Mary has to drink the contents of the jug. We have also added a few bling cards so you can play. Yeah, I already talked about that. Uh, but that's the other optional rule that I talked about, um, or that I was mentioning just now, that you can have like a large cup or a jug and just put it in the middle of the table. Any Bloody Mary that's gone, aside from all the drinking from that, you also pour, you know, some of your, some of your drink on there. That's basically how that works. Um, it's really up to you if you want to go ahead and, you know, uh, play that. But overall, you can see that this concept was inspired from King's Cup. If you're not familiar with King's Cup, that's kind of how it works regarding the Kings. That's essentially it though. Hopefully I did not miss anything, but as always, you know, make sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe, and turn on those notifications if you enjoyed the video. I will see you all later. Bye-bye everyone. Have a great day.